Hello everyone, and thank you for joining me for today's Tamron mini video seminar. My name is Ken Hubbard. I'm the field service manager for Tamron, as well as a professional photographer. Today's subject is going to be my favorite photos. I've actually condensed it down to my photos of 2019. But I'm not just going to show you five images. What I wanted to do is actually show you a few more images that I felt were runner-ups to the final image of that day uh, of what I captured that I felt was truly my favorite. The first set of images are the Wild Horses of California. Andre Costantini originally set out to capture a video of Shane Russick as he photographed these beautiful animals. He's a professional photographer out of Los Angeles that agreed to show us some of his favorite packs. It ended up being a, a truly brilliant day. Uh, these animals are incredibly beautiful and incredibly powerful. Um, so, like any wild animal in any park or national park or area that you go to, you want to keep your distance. So to start off with, uh, the lens of choice that I used that day was the Tamron 150 to 600. It gave me uh, a ton of flexibility to zoom in tight on them, as well as, you know, do a full shot of the whole herd if necessary, but also maintain that safe distance. So whenever you find yourself in a situation like this with wild animals, always maintain that distance. Uh, I know they look beautiful and friendly, most of the time, but they are way more powerful than we are. Uh, you can tell by this image alone. I mean, when they get up and start rearing on their hind legs, you should see their, their pure power. So uh, this day was amazing. They started out kind of slow. They were a bit mellow in the beginning. So it did allow us to do some really nice close up tight, tight shots of them. But then as the day went on, they got a little bit more active and they started running around. So capturing them in their runs, kicking up the dirt was truly spectacular. One of the things I recommend uh, to do in a situation like this, because you want to shoot as many images as possible, as fast as you can, because you never know when the action will stop is I would set my camera to continuous high shooting mode. This way you press the shutter down and hold it there and it just keeps firing. You never know when they'll turn towards you or away from you or just start rearing back on their hind legs. The other is I would keep the camera on continuous focus as well. This way, once it locks on to your subject, it'll continue to focus no matter where the subject goes. Uh, the other thing is I found out very quickly that putting a camera on a tripod, even with a gimbal head, kind of limited your movement. I chose the handhold about 95% of my images. It just gave me the flexibility to be able to move exactly where they went and follow along with them much, much easier. When it came to finally picking the images that I liked, it, I realized very quickly that the most powerful images were the ones where there was action, where there was dust, but also turning them into black and white. Uh, it just really helps you concentrate on the animal itself and really see the fine details of their faces, their manes, uh, their fur, and everything like that. So that's why with this one, uh, you know, originally had edited it down to color, but then turned it to black and white and really loved it. The end result image that is my first favorite is this one here. Uh, it was a moment, and I, I think as photographers, we all have this moment where you're capturing something, and there's either tons of action or it's a sunset, but there's a specific moment that you know, you go, oh, wow. I hope I got that. I hope it's in there. 
At that point, do not take that viewfinder away from your eye and start scrolling through your images because you may miss something after that. Just trust yourself that you got it. Once this scene, these two horses were going at it with each other, I will admit when the black one or the darker one reared up and went down and started looking like it was about to bite the neck of the white one, I had that moment that I did have to tell myself, do not stop shooting. I shot through the whole sequence until they ran completely apart with each other. And then I became a little kid behind the camera again and tried to find this image. And I did have that moment where I was like, I was pretty happy with it. So it's, you know, no matter how long you are shooting for, you still have those moments that are just super fantastic and make you smile when you see that end result image. And again, uh, turning it to black and white just gave it a little bit more power. And then I also added a little bit of sapia tone to it to give it more of that Western rustic feel as well. My second set of images are from Grand Teton National Park. And this, I've been there a number of times and uh, I will admit more often than not, I do not get the weather or the conditions that I'm looking for, but that doesn't stop me from capturing images. And in this case, uh, this set of images, most of them are shot with the Tamron 24 to 70. Uh, and in this case, we had a beautiful morning. Uh, the sun was out, beautiful light on the Tetons themselves, but unfortunately there were no clouds in the sky. In that case, you know what, I just kind of cut out the sky itself and concentrate more on the reflection and the foreground as well. It just, you know, don't get discouraged when the conditions aren't perfect. Uh, we also did some night photography. We lead workshops with AIM Media, um, nationalparktrips.com. We do a number of workshops and night skies workshops, and this is from one of them using the Tamron 15 to 30. A couple of quick tips with night photography. Be patient, have a tripod, a shutter release or remote cable. And it's all about long exposures here, but not too long. Uh, you are going to need to open up your aperture pretty wide to let in a lot of light. Have a long exposure somewhere about 20 seconds. Increase your ISO maybe to 3200. And then, you know, capture the image. Just be careful that your shutter speed isn't too long. You know, sometimes going past 25, 30 seconds, what you're going to get is movement in the stars. So if you're looking for pinpoints, remember to keep that shutter speed just slow enough that you don't get any streaks, but long enough to capture the light. There's another great spot there in the Grand Teton area, it's called the Teton Raptor Center. The past few times I've gone there to do workshops, we've been fortunate enough to be able to bring our groups there, and they are truly a fantastic bunch of people. Uh, they rescue birds that they keep there forever, the ones that they can't release, but they also rehabilitate and release birds back into the wild. And this was a, a beautiful owl that they had there that unfortunately will not be going back into the wild. He uh, has some major hearing loss that uh, causes him uh, you know, not be able to hunt as well. But he is a beautiful bird and he's super friendly. And because of that lack of hearing, his bobbing of his head really gave some animated reactions just like this one. So my favorite from this trip to the Grand Tetons was this one. Like I said in the beginning, unfortunately, sometimes when I travel, you don't get perfect conditions. And uh, there have been a number of times in the Tetons that there's either been tons of snow, tons of rain, no clouds in the sky. But this particular morning at Mormon Row, it all kind of came together. Uh, we had a beautiful sunrise, we had clouds in the sky, and it just had this soft, soft light casting over everything. Really great, made for a great morning. Shot it with the Tamron 24-70. to 70. 
I'm going to say my aperture was about f11, ISO 200, and 1 125th one of a second exposure, somewhere in that range. So the next images are from Iceland. Uh, this has become a very, very popular place for photographers to go. And the first time I went there, I very quickly saw why. It is truly the land of fire and ice. Uh, the nickname is very, very appropriate. You can go from the city of Reykjavik to what looks like the grasslands of Ireland to volcanic gray to black seashores. It's just an incredible, incredible place. And with that dynamic landscape, their buildings are pretty dynamic as well. You know, you got stark black churches to white and red churches to all sorts of different buildings. Uh, this particular church was on the way to a, a photo shoot we were doing and, you know, the white and red against that hill in the background was just really dynamic. So we just pulled off to the side of the road and decided to capture some images. As we were moving on throughout the day, uh, we came across some of Iceland's horses, which they are also very well known for. They are extremely friendly and beg for their pictures to be taken. This guy was kind of hanging off in the distance because there was a little gully between us and them, but it allowed me to bring out a little bit longer lens, the 70 to 210 Tamron, and open up the aperture of it. So I had a little shallower depth of field. I really like having that, that isolating of the subject to the background in this case, you know, a really nice soft background. It gives a little bit more dimension to it. These horses are, are, are really beautiful, like I said, and super friendly. Um, and they're just in Iceland. Uh, the Iceland government is so, so strict with them and want to keep them safe that once an Icelandic horse leaves Iceland, it can never come back. They do not want to bring any foreign diseases that may affect their herds. So, Whenever I go, no matter if it's for a assignment or if I'm going with friends, usually I, I like to take a pup, p couple of pictures of the people I go with. You know, I just got to relax it and not always be the professional photographer, not always be in that mode that I have to capture this moment or capture that moment. Keep it light and keep it fun. Have uh, fun with what you do. I know a lot of times when I'm out there teaching workshops, people are getting frustrated, they're getting anxious. Take a step back, realize this is this is meant to be fun. This is not brain surgery, we're not saving lives in the case of landscape photography, uh, but we're there to have fun. And the more fun you have, the better images you're gonna create. Uh, this is George, Cecil, and David on our trip to Iceland. We had a great time. We were there for about eight days. Uh, fortunately, we had some pretty good weather when we were there. Iceland is tricky. You can get some pretty bad weather pretty quickly in that area. So my favorite from this trip is Diamond Beach. Uh, the first time I went to Diamond Beach, there wasn't uh, many ice pieces there. So the second time when I went with George, David, and Cecil, we had a number of them. And the tide was really good that it would wash up past them and slowly wash past. Uh, the technique I kind of used, because I was a little ill-prepared, I had boots on, but not big enough ones. So I had set my uh, camera to manual, uh, kept the exposure exactly the same each time because I wanted a specific uh, aperture f11 f16 so i had a large depth of field a shutter speed slow because i wanted that movement in the water about three or four seconds for each shot and an iso uh, i think around 400 somewhere in that range but the the specifics were the aperture stopped down so i had a little bit more depth of field and a slower shutter speed so i got that movement in the water the funny story is that because I was ill-prepared and didn't have the correct boots on, as the water came in, I had to move away 
from the little ice pieces and as it went back and retreated into the ocean i would run up set my camera and tripod take two or three images another way would crash go past the icebergs ice pieces as it retreated back to the water run up again i would do it about five or six times for each set of of ice pieces. This particular one I really like. I just like the way I framed it all underneath the horizon within the ocean. The the lines leading back to the ocean atop the black sand I just felt was uh, the best one from that day of shooting. The next set of images was from Apalachicola. Slim Fats. He is a Delta Blues singer. Uh, that plays the first Sunday of every month at a place called the Bowery Station in Apalachicola. It's a, a funky little music joint down there that is, has two really great owners. And Slim himself is a super fantastic guy. He's about five foot two, maybe barely a hundred pounds, but has the deepest growly Delta Blues voice you can imagine. And he truly has a, he was a character. I was fortunate enough to meet him originally uh, when I was down there. I just stumbled in and started talking with him and, and the owner and asked him, hey, next time I come down, can I do a, a shoot with you? Uh, both agreed, uh, the both the venue and Slim. So I was fortunate enough to actually shoot a live performance of him and then the next day the Bowery Station opened and we did a formal portrait session with him so I got to see him in action as he was singing but also got to sit with him and actually talk with him and shoot some formal images. I shot it all with the 70 to 200 Tamron gave me the flexibility at 70 millimeters to step back a little bit and do more of a, a full body shot but again at 200 to be able to zoom in and do tight nice shots like this getting the details of his hands on the fret and and the guitar as well uh, just and opening up that aperture to 28 and having just a really really shallow depth of field again gives a little bit more of an impactful feel to it it just kind of draws your eye in right to his hand and the fret my favorite image from this session was during the formal portrait session. Uh, he just has such a, an incredible, incredible face and, and texture and wrinkles and the beard and everything. This Him looking straight into the camera just drew me in as soon as I saw it when I went editing through the images. And just like the horses you saw earlier i turned this one to black and white and immediately knew that's the way it should be it just brings out more of the feel and the emotion of it so <clears throat> if you ever find yourself in apalachicola the first sunday of the month go down to the bowery station about three o'clock and check out slim and tell him ken said hello uh, i can't wait to get down there again my last image, set of images, were from Norway. More specifically, the Lofoten Islands. Uh, this is in the more northern section of Norway. It's within the Arctic Circle and is about as far away as I've been from uh, general public or, or the wildest area I've ever been. It is truly for the hardy uh, if you decide to live there. But visiting and photographing there is amazing. The people are super friendly. The food is fantastic. This is from one of the local restaurants. It was a seafood soup that was so good. We went back a couple of times for it. It was just fantastic. I always take these type of <coughs> images as well when I go. I, I like to photograph the food and photograph areas that we stop in that may not be you know the the grand landscape but it, it also adds to the story of where you go um, fortunately for me there was enough natural lighting there and really soft lighting that uh, i didn't really have to do much it was uh, didn't add any light didn't reflect any light this is just purely uh, natural light from the building 
one of the truly iconic things about the Lofoten Islands are their fishing villages and their red huts. This is one of the more uh, outposty ones. This area was just fantastic. Uh, these houses, the, the red houses against the white snow was just extremely dynamic. Uh, these houses, they, they were old fishing villages that they've now turned into uh, hotels or little apartments that you can rent out and stay in. And in this particular one, this, this fishing village, they, they were known for their Nor Norwegian cod fishing. And they have a, a very unique way of drying them. They basically have these gigantic wood racks that once they catch the fish and they bring them ashore and they gut them, they lay them on the, tracks to, the racks to air dry. They don't put any salt or anything like that. It's just naturally air dried fish um, and fortunately for us we had some fresh snow that happened overnight so this added a little bit more to the scene in this case one of the main reasons we went to the Lafferton Islands was to try to capture some northern lights unfortunately the weather while we there we were there just didn't agree with what we came there for so most nights it was pretty cloudy and the weather literally changed every 15 minutes. It would go from a partly clear sky, like here, to rain, to sleet, then to snow, then partly clear sky again, and repeat it over and over again. Here, I used the moon to that was backlighting the clouds to give an eerie glow uh, to behind the mountains, but it also reflected off the little stream that went into the water that's off to the right. Uh, it just made for a pretty dramatic image. I wish I could show an uh, image of the Northern Lights from this trip, but uh, we were skunked on this one. Just didn't happen for us. But my favorite <laughs> image from this particular trip was one night uh, while waiting for the northern lights, uh, a storm came in, started snowing, sleeting, raining again, and this is the village that we were staying in. So we decided, you know what, we'll go to bed early, you know, get some rest and make the most of it the next day. At about midnight, the alarms for all the buildings start going off and waking us up. Apparently, probably somebody was cooking and set off the alarm in one, and ended up uh, going off for all of them. Woke us up and we looked outside and we saw some clearing. So we decided, hey, let's walk up to the bridge and do some shots and maybe we'll get really lucky and see some Northern Lights. We didn't uh, see the Northern Lights, but it did, cre it did allow me to capture my favorite image of that trip. So sometimes, the worst of situations, an alarm going off at midnight. Don't just get up and grumble. Double check the situation. In this case, you know, it worked out. You know, we had about 20 to 30 minutes of clear time uh, that allowed us to capture some really great images. So, you know what? I'm going to do one more image. Uh, I'll do a six favorite, but I'm not going to go through all the previous ones. I just had one more of a location that was just truly, truly amazing. This was a Solar de Uni in Bolivia. Uh, just outside of the town of Uni is one of the largest salt flats in the world. Truly, truly amazing experiences. This is one of the first times I got to a location and honestly didn't know where to start at all. I was just in awe. I mean, my mouth dropped. We drove out onto the salt flat that had about 12 or so inches of water on it and just was so incredibly reflective. reflective. We had four or five storms coming in from different directions and I would, was just looking around trying to take it all in. And that's a piece of advice for this type of situation. Don't always feel you have to start taking photos right away. Stop, take in the location you're at, absorb it. 
um, look all around. It'll make you appreciate better and most likely will help you take better pictures. So I took about 15, 20 minutes and just took it all in. I grabbed my Sony camera with the 2875 and eventually started shooting. I'm not sure if this is my favorite image from there, but I have a feeling over time that's going to change. You know, every time I go back, I say, oh, I really like that one, or I really like that one. Sometimes you, your mood will dictate what your favorite image is of that day. But all in all, I would say if you get a chance to go to uh, uni, uh, Solar de Uni in this case, definitely do it. Uh, go between February and about April. That's when the salt flats flood and you get this reflection and you get these tremendous storms. Uh, one little fact about it is that what makes it so reflective is that there's actually a one foot elevation gain throughout the salt flat. So when you actually look at it, there is no hills except way off the mountains, way off in the distance. There's no up and down undulation to it. It's just incredibly flat and incredibly reflected. That's the color one. And again, I think that in this case, the color is nice, but it, it takes away something from it. Ultimately, just like slim fats and just like the horses turning it to black and white for me makes it more impactful and you can see more details you see more depth to it it's kind of like it better this way so i want to thank you for attending this seminar you can follow me on my facebook and instagram social pages ken hubbard photography and i hope to see you soon